There's just something really extraordinarily evocative about it and you don't know why, but it just like pulls at you. I think one of the beautiful things that Max always um, is able to do is to create a kind of a sonic world, which in our case is both orchestral and live instrumentational and electronic, which is not only evocative on its own terms, but kind of throws a golden line back into your memory to pull memories out that you then associate with the experience in, in, in real time. And I think that's why his you know, music is streamed a billion times, whatever it is, literally on Spotify. Wayne and I have worked together quite a lot. And uh, over the years, we've developed a pretty informal kind of conversational process. We just shuffle ideas back and forth, exchange enthusiasms and uh, strategies and uh, little plans and sketches. I guess both of us are really driven by a kind of curiosity, a sense of the, uh, the surprises, the potential surprises in the project. I think that's what sort of uh, drives us on. So the three acts are very different. You know, they have a very kind of like different tone. Perhaps the first act um, might feel more conventional in terms of the storytelling, flashback as a convention, you know, music that you would associate with that novel. It sort of tells you what the shape of the overall shape of the world is. So there is some instrumental music, there is some text, there is some electronic music, and it sets up this idea that the architecture will be an interplay between these things. Perhaps Act Two um, actually conflates many different ideas and sits in a more aggressive electronic language, where there are these kind of like beautiful utopian vistas that open out into contrast with the real violence and the, the destruction and the kind of bleaker picture of two. It starts out from the perspective of the gods gardeners, so it starts very acoustically, but then it quite quickly pivots towards a kind of supercharged version of the Act One language. So all of the sort of jeopardy and questions of Act One are sort of pushed much further in Act Two. Act Two is pretty crazy. And Act Three, as it stands at the moment, is something which just soars. You know, it's, um, it, it, it's music of hope and aspiration, and there's still grit inside, but it elevates us. A potential future, a potential set of solutions. All of the three acts share material, and actually each act ends with a trip, a different trip through a same kind of material. So you have a sense of recurrence and recognition in the music throughout. It's all based around this little falling line. So this is a really simple object. And you hear this at the end of at the end of each act. When the score finally arrived, I knew that this was going to be something that, that we haven't experienced. The material's pretty crazy, but David has been very generous <laughs> in entertaining all the, uh, the mad schemes. Working with the ballet for me is, is a great adventure because my world is normally full of text, but working with the ballet, I'm working with this other language. Um, and it's another language which I, you know, the language of movement, I, I, to some extent, I kind of stand outside it because I, I really don't understand it. And I'm very happy not to understand it. I feel like I'm, I'm sort of on holiday in another language when I'm working with the ballet. And I, I love that feeling of sort of not quite knowing what's going on because it allows a kind of spontaneity and freshness in terms of my response to it. I don't want to say that he's a groundbreaker, but he's an evolutionist. He's, he, I think that for him and his experience growing up and being influenced by all kinds of music, whether it's pop or rock or punk or being classically trained or electronica, it's all one thing. It, it doesn't, it, there, are, there are no boundaries. And that's what makes his music, I think, so special, is that, that he doesn't feel that we have to make those 
distinctions. The beauty of music, the point of music, the, what, the reason we work with bodies and music together is it's that experience that you have first of all somatically in your own body that you get through the music. It places you in a territory and then you have images that either contrast with that or actually go along with that and that's really powerful. So um, I'm really excited to hear that played um, live and I, I, I know Max is um, always going to find a way of, of doing what you expect but also do the thing you don't expect. <laughs>